are the team of ASS Science Foundation presents you the lectures on different topics which are there in UGC NET Environmental Sciences. Today we will be discussing about atmospheric stability. As you can see in our literature, we have drawn a diagram where we have shown on y-axis the altitude and x-axis we have shown temperature. Before we start anything, we will talk about what do you mean by atmospheric stability. So the first term which come in our mind is lapse rate or more precisely the environmental lapse rate before we start studying atmospheric stability. So all of you know environmental lapse rate is nothing but it's the rate of change of temperature with increase in altitude or height. As you can see in the diagram we have shown ELR which is environmental lapse rate whose value generally ranges from 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Then we have DLR which is called as a dry adiabatic lapse rate having generally values of minus 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer in the environment. We have saturated adiabatic lapse rate whose value ranges from minus 5 to minus 9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. These minus are only for the sake of that it shows a decrease in temperature nothing else. We have also shown that when there is a inversion condition exists there is a positive lapse rate. So one by one we will be talking about everything. So how one should decide that sorry whether the atmosphere is stable, unstable or neutral. So there are some very simple logics about it which we will be talking in detail. So if we will see the first condition if we talk about that when we say the environment is unstable. So when the environmental lapse rate which is 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer as all of you know is more than the dry adiabatic lapse rate then we say the environment is unstable. This is also called as super adiabatic condition. Why? Because the environmental lapse rate is more than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. So anything more than dry adiabatic lapse rate will be called as super adiabatic. Means more than adiabatic. When you talk about stable environment, so we see that environmental lapse rate is less than dry adiabatic lapse rate then we call that environment is stable in conditions. Generally we observe stable condition in early morning and late night. These are also the time when the inversion generally takes place. Basically inversion is of three type. Temperature inversion, radiation inversion and subsidence inversion. The details of which we have not mentioned here that can be uh, area of interest of someone if they want to look up the details. In case of stable, we also call as it as some adiabatic conditions because the environmental lapse rate remains lesser than dry adiabatic lapse rate. So anything lesser than adiabatic is called subadiabatic. So that's why the stable condition is also called as some adiabatic conditions. So let's now understand the theoretical concept of dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is called as DALR. So let us assume if we move up in an insulated balloon, air balloons were generally used for the observations in the sky. In the atmosphere, it will expand due to decrease in atmospheric pressure. As we go up, the pressure will decrease. As the gas will expand, its temperature will also drop. So, the moment gas will expand, its temperature will also drop down. Which there will be a decrease in temperature. So the temperature of air inside the air balloon will also drop without heat exchange from the atmosphere. This decrease 
in temperature inside a insulated balloon with increase in altitude is called as the dry adiabatic lapse rate or simply adiabatic lapse rate hope this things is clear more can we looked upon from the book of gilbert and master introduction to environmental engineering if somebody wants to read these things in details the decrease of pressure with height allows this air parcel to expand so air parcel will start expanding during the expansion so during expansion the energy is used up because all of you know the air is a bad conductor of heat so there is a negligible heat exchange between air parcel and surrounding that's why we called as adiabatic means heat change is constant this temperature change involving no external heat exchange so that's why we called as adiabatic process and the lapse rate is called as dry adiabatic lapse rate now we will be talking about saturated adiabatic lapse rate which is also called salr or saturated adiabatic lapse rate or wet adiabatic lapse rate sorry this is always less than dlr means it is always less than dry adiabatic lapse rate because latent heat which is there is released in condensation process and keeps a partial offset the adiabatic temperature loss now we will be talking about environmental lapse rate which is called as elr which you are studying from your elementary classes which is 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer means that each, each kilometer there is a decrease in 6.5 degree celsius of temperature and it is different from atmospheric lapse rate as this is the actual change in temperature with height and it might be recorded by an observer ascending in a balloon generally these of kind of observations are done while measuring the environmental lapse rate now we will be coming to condition stability so as we have shown in the diagram on the y axis we have shown altitude on the x axis we have shown temperature so in case of condition either the atmosphere will be stable or unstable or neutral so let us understand these one by one let us first talk about unstable or absolutely unstable environment so in that case we will observe that elr environmental lapse rate would be more than dry adiabatic lapse rate then the environment will be called as unstable or absolutely unstable when we talk about stable or absolutely stable condition then elr will be less than dlr or salr then we called as that the atmosphere is stable or absolutely stable there is another condition which is called as neutral stability in which both elr and dlr are equal means elr is equal to dlr then the atmosphere is neutral then there comes a very special case where we have seen that condition stability means there is a case which we called as conditional stability in that case you will find out that dlr which is dry adiabatic lapse rate is more than elr more than salr so this condition is known as conditional stability means dlr is more than elr more than salr so this was about atmospheric stability now we will talking about mixing height and these all lectures are brought to you people by the team of ass science foundation delhi so when we talk about mixing height or mixing depth so it is nothing it is the height up to which the atmospheric pollutant can mix up with the atmospheric air so if someone will ask you in the simple words the mix what is mixing height or mixing depth so the height up to which the pollutant can mix with atmospheric air that is called as mixing height or mixing depth so as you can see in the diagram shown on the x axis we have shown temperature on the y axis we have shown altitude and we have taken a cubical box in which we have shown the mixing height with the symbol mh and we have also shown the dry adiabatic lapse rate and actual ambient temperature profile have been shown 
So by projecting the ground temperature upward at DLR until it crosses the actual ambient temperature profile, a reason of turbulent mixing. So now we are defining the mixing height in other words. A reason of turbulent mixing is identified. The altitude of that mixed layer is called as MH. So mixing height can also be defined like this. Then the reason of turbulent mixing where the altitude of the mixing layer is called as mixing height. Now there's a decrease in ambient temperature at the rate of DLR when we talk about mixing height. Now here comes a very good term called as ventilation coefficient. So basically ventilation coefficient is a parameter which can be calculated to tell you the pollution load of an area looking into the mixing height and mean speed of the area. So ventilation coefficient is basically mixing height in meters multiplied with the wind speed in meter per second. So you can see the unit of ventilation coefficient will be meter square per second. And very a very important observation can be derived from ventilation coefficient value of an area. So if the values of ventilation coefficient are less than 6000 meters square per second are uh, indicative of high air pollution potential means lower the value of ventilation coefficient more pollution load means if the value of the ventilation coefficient is less than 6000 meters square per second then these indicate that the high air pollution potential is there and if the values are more than 6000 meters square per second means more dispersion and less air pollution potential in that area now we will be talking about the plume behavior of the smoke which can also be seen like that how the plume which are emitted from the chimney of the or the stacks of the different kind of industries how they behave in the environment when environment is stable unstable or neutral or conditionally stable that how they behave so basically we observe some five kind of plume behaviors which are first fanning plume second looping plume third coning plume fourth fumigation plume and fifth is lofting plume so we will be talking about these plumes in detail one by one so let's talk about first about the fanning plume so as you can show see that